Hello and welcome to my Brownlow votes for round five. Now before we get started, there were two players that kicked six goals this week. Who were they? Leave a comment below if you remember who it was and I'll tell you midway through the video and then if you go back and edit that comment and let me know if you got it right. Now remember these videos are my opinion and you can leave a comment if you don't agree with what I say, that's totally fine. But if I give someone some votes then there's a reason behind that from what I've seen. And yeah, anyway we can have a little discussion in the comment section anyway. But for the first vote I have Max Gorn for one vote. He had plenty of hit outs. He was willing the demons to try and get back into the game, unfortunately it wasn't enough. But yeah, I think for his effort he gets a one vote. Josh Dunkley gets the two. He also performed really well. He had 30 disposals and nine marks. He played really well, but I think the person who had the most influence on the overall game was Cam Rayner. He had heaps of clearances and he was extremely important, especially in the first half. I felt like his influence on the game was very important for the Lions to get the win. The Friday night game, we saw Western Bulldogs take on Essendon, and I was very confident the Western Bulldogs were going to get the job done, but Essendon bounced back after that terrible game last week against Port, and they played really, really well. There's probably going to be a few players here who could score some votes. Uh, overall, I think, um, the Essendon players played really well, and I think... Um, yeah, there's probably a few that we're going to miss out, but I have Sam Durham for the one vote. I thought he was very important to the team. Zach Merritt also racked up quite a few disposals, 27, 6 marks. He had a very big influence inside the mid. And then I think the most important player again was Xavier Dersma. While he only had 20 disposals, he did have two goals. He had 13 marks and four tackles. I felt like his influence on the game was very important. I know I say that a lot, but if you watch the game, you would understand that he was breaking lines. He was taking important marks and important spoils. And I feel like he did enough to get the three votes. The next game we saw the GWS Giants take on St. Kilda in Canberra. And this game definitely came down to the wire in the end. It definitely looked to me as if GWS should have won by a lot more. But they left the door open in the fourth quarter. And I guess they were just in saving mode. In the end, Saints came back. But GWS were able to hold on. Rowan Marshall was extremely valuable for St. Kilda. He had plenty of hitouts and hitouts to advantage. He also racked up 28 disposals himself. For the two vote, I have Brad Hill. He had 13 marks, 33 disposals. He played really well throughout the whole game. It's probably one of the best seasons he's had for a while. He kicked one goal, two, 32 disposals, 10 score involvements, and three clearances. He was very big for the Saints. He was probably one of the main reasons that the Saints actually had a good comeback. But for the three vote, I have Lockie Whitfield, who just racked him up yet again. 34 disposals scored a behind so that might influence the overall voting on the night but yeah interesting votes there that two of them are from saints the losing team and only one from the giants i don't think there was a massive outstanding performance by the giants they let the saints back in they have to be careful against a better team which will sting them the next game saw carlton take on the adelaide crows and this one was actually a pretty hard one to pick for me. There were quite a few good players. I thought Sam Walsh did really well. Patrick Cripps, Isaac Rankin. I feel like Rankin probably doesn't make the votes. Although it probably was one of the better games I've seen him play for quite a while. I just think there was a few players before him who had a better influence on the game. I could be wrong. I'll leave a comment below. But I've got Jordan Dawson for the one. Patrick Cripps for the two. And Ben Keys for the three. I did not expect Ben Keyes to be kicking three goals, so well done to him. He also played really well, and um, Akers also played well on the day. But I think ultimately because the Crows won and Ben Keyes got them off to a really good start in the first quarter, he had eight score involvements, ten marks, and one clearance. I feel like him playing as that, um, that odd small forward works really well for the Crows, and if he can kick at least one, two, and possibly even three goals a game, the Crows will actually look pretty good. The next game saw Port Adelaide take on Fremantle at the Adelaide Oval, and there were quite a few good players overall. I felt like Port should have won by more, felt like they had more influence on the game, but Frio, being the defensive team they are, kept both teams to a very low score. It was a really good game to watch, it was very exciting at the end there. Port came back. For the one, I felt Ivan Soldo played really well. He had 54 hitouts and a lot of them to advantage. I felt like he was a major player as to why Port ended up winning. 
For the two votes, I've got Zach Butters. He just throws his body straight at the ball, and he's a very hard player. You'd love to have someone like him in your team. He kicked a goal, 24 disposals. Connor Oze is probably a little bit stiff to miss out on the votes, but I feel like the most important player was Alex Pierce. He just kept that Freo defense locked down. It's very uncommon for a defender to win the three votes, but I felt like his influence on the game overall was extremely important. He shut down Charlie Dixon. In the end, Dixon was able to kick that goal, which helped Port win the game. But throughout the night, Dixon could have kicked an absolute bag, but Alex Pierce just shut him down every single time. So for me, he gets the three votes. On at the exact same time for some reason was the Suns and Hawthorne game. I didn't watch a huge amount of this game because I was watching the port, but I did go back and watch some of it the next day. Three most important players for me were Sam Flanders, Matt Rowe, and Noah Anderson. All Gold Coast Suns, obviously. Felt like the midfielders there played really well. Noah Anderson had a very good game, probably one of his best for a very long time. And those are my three votes. Next, the Geelong Cats absolutely spanked North Melbourne. Three most important players, Tom Stewart, he was, it felt like he was on North Melbourne's team, they're just kicking it straight to him. Harry Sheasel seemed like the only one from North Melbourne who actually gave a damn about the game. He set up quite a few scoring shots for North. He had 38 disposals, 15 marks and a goal himself. He was probably the only one from North Melbourne who gets a pass. But of course, Jeremy Cameron gets the three votes as he was a clear outstander. Kicking six goals in a 11 goal win is not super impressive, but his influence on the game, he moved up the ground quite a bit and he also had quite a few assists. He had 11 score involvements, three a goal assists and 21 disposals as your key forward. That Those are some very impressive numbers. If he did this every week, he'd win the Brownlow and the Coleman in the same year. And for the last game, West Coast Eagles and Richmond over at Optus Stadium was a very surprising game in the end. I tipped Richmond, which I just felt like West Coast Eagles were not the team that actually showed up on the Sunday, so well done to them. Thought uh, Shea Bolton was the only one that was keeping Richmond in the game. He played really well again, kicking three goals uh, very early in the game as well, which was very important to Richmond taking an early lead, but West Coast Eagles were able to run home with the win. I thought Elliot Yo in the midfield was really good 27 disposals and two goals but for my three vote i thought jake waterman had the most impressive game i've ever seen him play he had six goals 13 marks he moved up the ground pretty well he had 18 disposals in the end 11 score involvements and he was just everywhere he absolutely killed richmond that day and i feel like that's a three vote game for him so those are my games and overall scores, the one, two, threes. You can see on the screen here where the, the totals for the rounds. And then on this screen, you can see the total score throughout the whole year. This is the current leaderboard that I believe will be getting votes on Brownlow night. As you can see, I have three players on first at the moment. Isaac Heaney, Patrick Cripps and Max Gorn all on nine votes. Then Noah Anderson, Matt Rowell, Zach Butters, and Connor Z on eight. So we're starting to get a little bit of the leaders. Probably the people from six up are starting to be in that top pack. And then five down are slowly starting to fall away. But yeah, that's my leaderboard at the moment at the end of round five. I forgot to say it in the middle of the video, but obviously the two players that kicked the six goals were Jeremy Cameron and Jake Waterman. So well done to you if you got that correct. Edit your comment below if you did get them or if you didn't. Let me know. Thanks for watching.